Hi Flosstube, it's Lindsay and welcome back to Blushing Pink Stitches. It is Thursday the 18th of August and this is Flosstube number 16 I believe. Um, I want to say welcome to all my new viewers and welcome back if this is not the first video that you've watched. I really do appreciate everybody that takes time out of their day to watch the stuff that I put up on YouTube. Um, so this is a cross stitch channel. Um, so if you're new and you're into that, then welcome. Um, I actually, I mentioned this on the kit parade that I did a couple of weeks ago, but I um, surpassed a thousand subscribers um, about two or three weeks ago now, um, which I'm really, really um, excited about, blown away by. Um, so thank you very much to all of you that have subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed um, and you like what you see, please um, please consider hitting that subscribe button and perhaps uh, ringing the bell to let you know when um, I'll be uploading my next video. Um, I do tend to film every two weeks. It has been a little bit longer this time around. Um, we were away on holiday at the beginning of August and then I put a post up on my community page to say that I should have filmed the weekend just gone. Um, but it was so hot here in the UK again that to sit in this room in that heat um, and sort of be comfortable would not have been um, the case. So, um, so I decided to delay it. My husband has just gone um, to play a round of golf and um, he made me a cup of tea before he left, which is nice. My daughter's asleep. So I thought I would take the opportunity to stay to film. I had to look a little bit nicer this morning, but we went for a walk to the post office and um, got caught in the rain a little bit, which we weren't expecting. It wasn't supposed to rain today. But anyway, um, what I thought I would do today is talk about all of the stitching stuff first and then do a bit of a life update at the end. Um, so I've got, have I got any finishes? I've got some sort of part finishes. One part finish? Yeah, a couple, no, a couple of part finishes. Um, then I'll show you my whips. Um, I've got a little bit of haul. Um, and then um, I want to talk about my DMC master set later on in the video. Um, somebody asked me to do that. Um, and I want to do some floss tuber shout outs because I haven't done that in a while. Um, and I do write them down in my notebook and then I sort of get to the end of videos and forget to do it. And I'll do a bit of life update um, right at the end. So if you want to stick around that, that'll be great. Um, so... I think my partial finishes I'll just show to you as part of my whip piles because they are sort of whips, sort of finishes. You'll see as we go along. Um, I've done a, a good amount of stitching over the last, it would have been three weeks, three weeks, three and a half weeks, I think, since my last proper floss tube video. Um, I have had some model stitching to do, so I've had that's eaten into my normal stitching time. But as we've been on holiday from work, um, you know, when Bella naps, you know, I get some extra stitchy time. So, um, so yeah, that's been really nice. So I have still done a decent amount. Um, so the last time I filmed a, filmed a flush tea video was Saturday the 20, or Sunday the 24th of July. So it has been a few weeks. So we've got yeah, we have got a bit to talk about. Um, so these are in no particular order. I could have put them in an order and then I didn't. So the first thing that I worked on, and if you follow me on Instagram, um, what I've been doing to choose my next uh, whip is um, spinning a wheel that I've got on my phone. I think I showed it in my last Blush Tube. Um, and what I do is I'll take a screen video of that and put it up on my story. Um, and then I will also put up on my story what the whip looked like before I started on it. Um, and then what I tend to do is put a photo of how much progress that I've made once when I'm going to put it away. Um, so if you don't follow me on Instagram, um, it's a lovely place for you to see sort of what I'm doing in, in between 
um, floss to your videos. Um, so worked on, oh, bang to my elbow, sorry. Um, seashell, seashell Treasures by um, the gold, Dimensions Gold Collection. Um, it's a petite. Um, so when I did my whip parade, um, I said I wanted to get seven to 75% um, by the end of the year. Um, and I've made some good headway into that. So this is what this is looking like now. So let's just put this behind it. So um, I did all of this outlining here um, and this is the end of the piece. Um, and then what I did is I came in and I did the this shell, this shell, this shell um, and I backstitched these as well. Um, and then I did um, the cross stitching for this one um, and all the cross stitching for this one is done. But I don't backstitch them until I've done the cross stitching around them because anything that touches them could interfere. Um, so actually I've made really good headway on that. And if I think the next time I pick this up, what I plan to do is work on this. There's a big star here. Um, you can sort of see the shape of it coming out here. Um, I want to do the star um, and then backstitch this shell here. Mm, although that touches something else. Well, I can definitely backstitch these two shells here. So maybe cross stitch the star um, and then backstitch these two shells here. And then I, that's that's got to be 75%. Um, so I'm hoping to hit that goal. And um, this is using all the kit threads and it is the kit fabric, which is an 18 count ivory Ada. Um, and I have this pattern on my GoodNotes app um, on my iPad. Um, so that's how I'm marking off what I'm doing um, and it just makes it infinitely easier to um, really see what you're doing. Um, so yeah, if you've got a pattern that doesn't go into Pattern Keeper, for example, um, but it's still a PDF, um, or even if it's a, a good, like a, a decent-ish quality photo, an app like GoodNotes is a good shout. Like you can't... You're just literally highlighting the squares. So if I show you an example, um, don't do that. Can you just open it? So this is Seashell Treasures on my good notes. If I just show you a little bit of the pattern, I mean, this is zoomed right in. So you can see these are the stitches that I've um, done. They're highlighted and they're just highlighted, but they're highlighted so they're done. Um, so that makes it a lot easier for me. And if I scroll this way, you can see again all of these ones I've done. And you can just highlight in one colour, but I've tried to distinguish between um, stitches so it makes it a little bit easier for me to see what I've done. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend that. I think you have to pay a little bit of money for that app, but it's worth it. So I'm really, really pleased with my progress on that. This is... Um, this particular whip is one where if it comes up in the wheel, I'm like, oh, um, but once I get started on it, I get really into it and I love seeing the picture come alive. So I think it's just because it's so intricate. Um, but then in my head, I think it's really intricate. And then when I get started, I'm like, oh, OK, this is easier than what I think. So, yeah, there's that one. Um, so this is sort of a partial finish um this is summer memory jars by susan bates and um, you can buy this pattern on her in her etsy shop um but you can also get it in cross stitcher um the issue from august 2018 oh, um, and this is what it's going to look like um i'm stitching this as part of the nine jars sale um lauren from Chris, cross stitch bunny is hosting this and um, you can do the summer memory jars, which is the one that I chose to do, or you can do the Christmas memory jars, uh, which is what, uh, I don't know whether a lot of people, a lot more people working on that, but Lauren's doing it because she's done the summer ones, but also because like it's the run up to Christmas. So by the time that we finish, you could FFO this and, and display it at Christmas. Um, but let's just fold this up so you can see. 
So I finished jar number three. And this is what it's looking like. Just fold that nicely so you can see. There we go. So yeah, I did this one this month. And you've got the really pretty garden scene and the roses and the butterfly in the foreground. Um, and I really like that. And I went back and I filled in that missing leg over there. This is looking lovely. Um, I, I did make a little mistake on this. So um, let's see. Um, before I tell you right now, um, put it in the comments below if you can spot what the mistake is. Let me just hold it up for you. Okay, and now I'll tell you. Uh, there's a counting error. So there's two, there's one too many gaps in between this one and this one, as opposed to that one and that one. And I got to like here in my stitching and I realised and I said to my husband, oh, what am I going to do? And he was like, no one is going to notice that. And it's true, you can't really tell. So, um, yeah. Oh, I, oh, I wasn't going to frog like that whole thing. I mean, normally I am a, I do frog like because it irritates me, but because they're full coverage, yeah, I don't know. I just decided actually I'm not going to on that one. So I'm really pleased with that. And the next jar, we're supposed to be stitching jar number four on the 23rd of August. So um, it's not too, too late to jump in. Um, you know, you can catch up really easily. It takes me um, two days of, to do the actual stitching and then like a day or like a, a, an evening to do the back stitching. So you could catch up in a week um, on that one if that was the only thing you were working on, on obviously. Um, one of the projects that I took that project away with me um, because I, was, I knew I was going to be away um, when I was supposed to be doing it. Um, the other project I took away, and this was really good for the car as well, is, um, is it this one. Yeah, this is two by two by the Prairie Schooler. Um, and I worked on this. I wasn't going to do Noah's Ark, but I'm such a completionist that um, I kind of had to. So um, I finished it. And this is what it looks like. That was a lot of stitching. Um, I think when I showed this to you last, I'd just done a little bit of this beige in the windows, not much. Um, so yeah, that was a lot of stitching, but it looks really cool. Um, and it was like a really good car stitch. I'm not great with stitching on Ada in the car because with Ada, I find I need a hoop or a cue snap. And then like with like bumps in, you know, when you're going over uneven bump, like uneven surfaces on a rose, you get, you know, it's bumpy and things and it can be okay if you're on the motorway. But I find stitching in hand on something like linen or um, even weave is much easier for me. Um, yeah, so that was a really good car project. Um, I didn't say that um, the summer memory jars were on just 14 count white Ada. This is on a piece of um, 28 count Cashel linen in antique ivory from Zweigart. Um, so I've got three little patterns in here left to do. I've got the tall giraffe, the um, elephant on his hind legs, and I've got the camels. So I'm hoping when this comes up again, I can perhaps get all three of those patterns done. We'll see. Because um, I think that was supposed to be a finish for the end of the year. Let's just look back at my goals. I have written them down in here. Two by two, remaining four patterns, yeah. Um, so I think that will be a good one. Um, okay, this is a whip, but it is also a new start. So, um, Caroline, Carolyn, Carolyn, Carolyn from Seizuk Stitch. Um, I'll leave a link to her channel down below. She put up a video on her channel that had the title discussion of a stitching shelf or something like that. 
Um, and it was her, oh God, I'm not going to remember the lady's names now. Um, and a couple of other floss tubers who I can't recall what their names are. Am I going to be able to? Sorry. No, she hasn't put it on the description either. And there's a couple of other floss tubers that are also hosting this. Um, they um, decided to do a stitch along for um, Amy Stewart's A Stitching Shelf um, and start it on World Cross Stitch Day, which was the 12th, Friday the 12th of August. Um, and I love Amy Stewart's patterns. Um, I'd, bought, I'd already bought a couple um, and I'd always wanted to do one of her shelves. But if, if you've watched before, you've, you've heard me mention in a video that I think the minis are out of the question. The regular charts, I think, don't show enough detail. Um, and then I, I belong to um, a few groups on Facebook that are sort of full coverage orientated. So the Heaven and Earth Designs group. And then a couple of um, groups dedicated to Amy Stewart and one of which is the um, group for people that are stitching the, the shelf, the um, stitching shelf. So not stitchings in that sentence. Um, and um, there was a lady on there who had finished the super size max colour uh, version of a stitching shelf. And it was amazing. Um, the detail on it. It was huge, obviously, but it was incredible. And it took her four years and four months to finish. Um, but it was, I think, the only thing that she worked on um, in that time. So, yeah. So then I, I thought, well, I'm going to have to join in, aren't I? Um, so I am denied for a little while on my, whether to do regular or supersize, whether to do max colour or not max colour. And what was really helpful was that I put a post on one of those groups and, and people helped me with sort of my decision. Um, but also um, looking at hashtags on Instagram and looking at people that are stitching the different versions of it. So the regular version, the, the super size version, the max colour, the regular colours. Um, and actually I took some screenshots on my phone to compare the level of detail. Um, and I think, I think I've still got them. So... If I can show you them on my phone, if not, I might put them on the screen. Let's see if I can show you them on the phone. Because um, then you'll be able to see where I'm coming from. Let's see if it's a bisque. Can you see that? Without too much glare. So that is the, that is somebody who's stitching the regular chart. The regular size chart and then this is somebody who's stitching the super size max color i think now the, the the difference in detail is incredible and that was my issue like i really want the detail to come out i don't i think this looks dull and blurry almost whereas this is you can see the detail and it's really clear and it's really vibrant then I had a chat with my mum and I was like, oh, you know, if I do the super size, it's going to be massive. Like, what do you do with it at the end? And we had a chat about it and we came to the conclusion that, well, this is going to take you so long to do. And you, the pleasure is going to come from actually doing the project, um, you know, the stitching itself, the process. And you're going to love it when it's finished and, and you can just deal with what to do with it then. So, um yeah, so I decided to do it. So anyway, I am stitching uh, the super size max colour, a stitching shelf by Amy Stewart, charted by um, Heaven and Earth Designs. Okay, so um, I've only done two days worth of work on this. So there's not a lot to see. These are my um, threads. Um, these are my, the floss. I made these floss cards um, using the finished photo image I don't even know how I'm going to show you this to you it's so much fabric and um, I'm stitching this on 25 count um white Lugana um 
but it's not the easy guide. And someone was asking me why, I think it was my friend Megan, we were having a discussion about, you know, why did you choose not to use the gridded? And for my other pattern, for my other Hade, I didn't do it because it was so small. This one, I didn't do it because I didn't do it with my other one. But I don't know. I don't know whether I regret that decision now, we'll see. I don't think I do. Okay, so how am I gonna show you this to you? Let's just do that. But this is how far I've got so far. This is like 0.05% and it's something like 480 stitches. Um, and I'm stitching this in the same way that I'm stitching um, Quick Stitch Blue Butterfly. So um, cross country, not extreme cross country, but it's, um, cross country and I'm sort of going that way. Um, and you can see I'm working on sort of two or three um, 10 by 10 squares at once. And I was doing a little bit of parking because this is max colour. There are a lot of confetti stitches. So I was getting sort of stitches like in this colour, for example, or these colours that you'd only get a few and then you'd stop it over here. And then the other ones were sort of like dotted over here. But I had quite a few threads that were parked um, when I picked this up yesterday and I really wasn't liking it. I just I find what to do with the threads, I find that they get in my way. Um, and I know you can use bobbins and stuff like that to kind of contain them, but it just wasn't suiting me. So I thought, right, what I'll do is I'll start stitching in the um, parked threads um, and I'll get rid of them. And I'll just go back to doing plain old cross country um, with a little bit of typewriter method. So what I do is I'm picking a stitch in here that's the top topmost stitch leftmost stitch if that makes sense and then working it sort of up and down in this area over here until sort of I get to a part where you know it might be right over here or something and then going back and pick another one there are some gaps in here because um my master set isn't yet of dmc isn't yet complete in the sense that there are threads in other projects that I need to pull out um and actually I when I ordered the rest of the dmc threads i accidentally missed four off of the list and it just had to be that two of them of those four are in this block which is ridiculous but anyway um yeah so maybe i'll stand up and show you the entire piece of fabric so you can get an, an idea of the scale i can't even fit it all in frame this is this corner this is this corner. This piece of fabric is a bit bigger than what it needs to be. Like it's definitely longer than what it needs to be. Um, and it's a little bit wider, but you get, get an idea of the scale. Um, so at the moment I'm stitching this in hand. Again, I was kind of thinking, you know, what am I gonna do with this big piece of fabric? Um, but I just kind of like, um, manipulate the material so I've just got the bit in my lap that I'm working on at that particular point and it's working at the moment we'll see how it goes I don't know um okay so that's that one um I worked out if I did 100 stitches a day it would take me just over 19 years to finish so I was like oh my god maybe 100 stitches a day maybe I'll do 200 stitches a day I don't know at the moment. I'm trying to work on it a little bit every day. Um, yeah, I think I want to finish Quick Stitch Blue Butterfly and then see where I am and how I want things to move forward from there. Um, I'll show you Quick Stitch Blue, Blue Butterfly in a minute. Um, because that's going to be finished this year, I'm kind of thinking then I can sort of rethink what I'm doing and also when I go back to work like it's easier now for me to do 100 stitches on quick sticks blue butterfly in the morning before Bella wakes up um, and then what I tend to do is either during her nap or when she's gone to bed in the evening I'll work on a stitching shelf for however long um, and then the other bit of her sleeping I'll work on another project 
but of course I'm only going to have her naps on my days off so my three days of working I'm not going to have her naps so I need to kind of work out how it's going to go when I go back to work but anyway yeah it's been a lot of time talking about that yeah let's have some tea This is my mummy mug. Who's this by? I can't remember. Emma Bridgewater. Um, I got this for Mother's Day last year, my first Mother's Day. And then I bought my husband the daddy one for Father's Day. And he opened it and laughed. And I was like, well, we had to have the set, didn't we? So, um, yeah. Um, okay. Then. Oh, okay. So. This is the Animal House by Satsuma Street. Um, and I'll put a picture up on the screen of what it's going to look like when it's finished. This was a stitch along, uh, but the stitch along has finished. All the parts have been released. So, um, yeah. And I have stitched part one. There are six parts. But I did part one. And it only took me a couple of days to do. Uh, so this is what it's looking like so far. Isn't it lovely? I really love it. Um, the colours are amazing and um, I love it on this fabric and like I said it's stitched up so quickly in the end so I think I had a goal of doing half of this before the end of the year let's have a little look or was it four parts animal house oh no 50% so parts one two and three I think I'll be able to do that. It needs to come up, obviously, a couple more times in my rotation. But that's fine. Um, I really enjoy working on that. That is a piece of um, 28 count Cashel linen. Um, like It's like a raw linen. Uh, and that was what was recommended. Um, okay, this is um, Fruits of Plenty. I only just picked up pick this up this morning um i normally do 100 stitches on quick stitch blue butterfly but my tablet had run out of battery and i kind of knew that from yesterday but for some reason it slipped my mind to put it on charge and um, so instead i started stitching on this um and i i just worked on this this morning so i finished off the bottom of the squirrel and this uh, this bit down here it's not all of this because this bit was in july's part but it's just this bit um so yeah this is the block that's got the big house in the middle Let's see if i can i've got the picture here so i'm working on this block here well i did wonder i haven't looked at this picture this morning i did wonder why these big blocks were really empty it's because you're supposed to put your initials there um so yeah you can pick what house goes in the middle um so he gives you eight different options uh, which is really nice. There are a couple of bird houses that I was tempted by because obviously you've got lots of birds in here, but I'm stitching the bog standard house. That's what I decided on in the end. So um, I think it's not going to take me that long to do this bit around here. This bit's going to be a lot of stitching in the middle. So I think I'm going to do all of this first and then I'll do the house. So yeah, enjoying this as usual. I pick it back up again and it's such a comfort um i have been thinking about my plans for next year um and something that i said to my husband over breakfast this morning was um that i probably won't do like many stitch alongs or things or pieces where i do something every month on them just because i i like spinning my wheel and working on different projects um and i'm not not always doing that I mean I have had more model stitch to do this month so I've had less of my own stitching time but still so that's that one not much to show and um, that's 32 count white linen from Zygarde um, and it's DMC 3750 952 I think um, yeah so there's that one and uh, let me show you that last this, I just did a little bit of work on this one. Looking at my daughter, she turned over in her sleep. Okay. That's a picture of this one. I tend to have the page on the threads. 
Okay, this this is Moth with Moon. And it is by... Have I got it written down on here? No, I don't. Mm, I think it's 2x2 two two stitch art. I want to say... It's not written on here. I think it's two by two stitch art, but I link all of the patterns in the in the comments down below, so um, you'll be able to see. So I picked this one up. Um, sometimes I can do a little bit of stitching when my daughter's awake, and this is a good one. Um, so what I did this time. Sometimes I apologise for having threads hanging, but I'm not going to do this time because I like to have my needle, my thread and needle ready for picking it straight back up again. So that's why. Um, I worked on all the brown, this colour brown here, all the way up here. Um, so that colour's now done on this side, um, apart from a little bit down here. Um, so now I'm just filling in the white or the cream. There's a bit of cream up here and a darker brown to do. Um, yeah, I wanted this to be finished by the end of the year. Not sure if that's going to happen. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Put that back in there. Okay, and the last one I want to show you is Quick Stitch Blue Butterfly. And um, so this is um, artwork by... Ching Chow Kewick, and it's chartered by Heaven and Earth Designs. This is what it's going to look like when it's finished. And yesterday, I passed the 50% mark. So again, if you follow me on Instagram, I did put a picture of this up on my Instagram. So you would have seen what it looked like. Um, yeah, here we go. This is what 50% looks like. It's beautiful I love it yeah so lovely the colors are amazing the way that they've the way that they blend together is lovely the butterfly is looking stunning love it so um, what I'll do is I'll put a picture on the screen here of what it looked like the last time I did a floss tube video because that's quite a good, I liked that last time so that you could see the comparison. Um, so I think this time along you can see this flower coming a lot, in, in a lot more now. I filled in a lot of this um, bit of the wing of the butterfly. Um, all the stitches are done in these leaves and the bottom of this flower. So again, what I'm sort of doing is, is I'm doing cross country, but I'm picking the topmost leftmost stitch in the 10 by 10 block going across. And I'm trying to complete, this is, this is a page here and then this is a little partial page under here. So I'm trying to complete this and then I'll go across and do that. So um, those stitches are done. So whereabouts am I? I'm just working in some stitches over here and then I'll go back over here. So yeah, she is lovely. Still headed for a November finish. Um, with Pattern Keeper, it doesn't give you like a projection of um, how long it thinks or, or when you're going to finish the pattern. Um, you can work it out by sort of like averaging out your stitches per day or per week or whatever, and then sort of like times in it by, or like dividing the total stitch count by your average daily count and sort of um, see how many days that is. So you can work it out, but I think that would be a quite a nice feature for Pattern Keeper to add. You know, this is what date we think you're going to finish it by. So that's that one. Uh, that that's again twenty five count, um, Wiley Bar, uh, from from Swigart. So yeah, that's they're all of my whips. What should I do now? Okay, so somebody asked um in the comments, would you mind talking a little bit more about your 
DMC Master set. Um, the lady mentioned in the comments, I can't remember her name now, that um, she'd sort of had a master set on, and not, you know, toyed with the idea over the years and it, didn't, it hasn't really worked for her before. Um, so she wanted to know kind of what I was doing with it. Um, so I got out my box, dropping stuff. So this is my box. Um, I will leave a link to the box down below. Um, I got it from Amazon. Um, it's double sided. Um, I did originally, when I showed this to you last time, I did have some metallic threads in here and some variegated DMC. I've taken those out and put them in a separate box now. Um, Charlie, I think her name is from Charlie Feathers. She messaged me on Instagram to say, can you actually fit the whole set in there, like 500? And I did a quick sort of like average count of how many were, were in each of these things. And I, I said, yeah, you can probably fit more than that in here. Um, so this isn't the whole set. So like I mentioned, when I was doing a stitching shelf, I am missing, I was missing some colours because they're in other projects. So what I started doing was going through, I went through my whips and I pulled out um, any that were missing from here and put them in here. And any that were duplicates, I put in this bag. So this is my bag of duplicate DMCs. Um, and then I've got a um, so I've got a thread inventory, a DMC thread inventory as an Excel spreadsheet um, on my phone, and um, it's on my Google Drive. And I downloaded um, the spreadsheet from the Lord Libyan website, and then I just uploaded it to Google. Um, and you, I use it on Google Sheets. It has exactly the same functionality as Excel. Um, so I have that that spreadsheet where um, I keep. Um, how many of each DMC colour I've got. Um, so for example, black, I think at the moment I've got like 13 um, bobbins or skeins of it hanging around in my projects. So um, when I run out of a skein in my master set, I'll go rifling through here and look for 310 and put it back in there. Um, so, and then, I showed you this bag before. I've started bobbinating them. I'm, I'm trying to do 10 a day. Um, and then putting them in here. And the four that I was missing, um, I did a wool warehouse order um, for something else, which I'll show you um, later. And um, I put the four in that order. Um, so what am I gonna use this for? I'm gonna use this for um, all of my projects, except for Patterns like um, Nora Corbett or Mirabilia um, because they're the sort of patterns where, well, I'm not going to use it basically for any pattern that I think um, if there's a dye lot issue, you're going to really notice that there's a difference between that thread and that thread. Um, and I don't want that to happen in, you know, pieces that are going to take a long time to do and, you know, you want to look a certain way. Um, equally, like if if there are patterns where you've got a big chunk of a particular colour right next to each other, you don't want to be using two different schemes from two different dye lots and there be a noticeable difference. Um, like, for example, I've got a um, Country Magic Stitch um, Hogwarts Express pattern um, in my patterns to kit up section of my cupboard. Um, and that requires three or four different colours where it has like two or three different skeins or three or four different skeins. Because there's a lot of sky, for example, and there's a lot of grass, for example. That's a pattern where I will buy the multiple schemes for that pattern and then use my master set for the other ones. Um, a stitching shelf does have some colours that are that need multiple schemes, but I'm not going to buy multiple schemes for them because I feel like those there's not a lot of block stitching in that. So the likelihood of me putting two different um lots of the same colour next to each other and the different dye lots is slim. 
Um, if it was something smaller, if it, I don't know, like this is a very confetti heavy piece um, and there's lots of detail and there's lots of going on. Some of the other Hades, a lot, well, lots of the other Hades have more blocky bits of colour in them and then I might consider, okay, so I might get the multiple schemes for them. I think it would depend on the project um, in that sort of sense. And then what I do for individual projects um, is I have floss cards. So these are my ones for quick stitch blue butterfly. And I write on the back the DMT number and the symbol. And then I cut a length off of a skein in my master set and I put it on the floss drop. And then when that length runs out, I then go back to my master set and I cut another length and put it on there. Um, and I won't use all of this, all of these threads, the remaining threads on here in the remaining pattern. I just, I just, I just don't think I will. Um, I'm doing the same for a stitching shelf. Um, with um, my heads, what I'm going to do moving forward is make sure that my colours are together. Um, so, for example, all the blues are together, all the greens are together. Um, so it's easier to look through and find a colour that I'm after. Um, it doesn't really matter so much with this one because this has... I can't remember how many colours. It has like more than half less than um, a stitching shelf though. So, um, yeah, it doesn't take me long to rifle through them. Uh, but yeah, so that, that's what I'm going to do. And then my other projects, I do the same. So I have um, floss cards. Um, so let's see. I haven't... Oh, this one. I haven't made floss cards for every one of my whips that I need to yet. But I will. When they come up in rotation, I will make the floss cards then. So these are my floss cards for... Um, some of my memory jars. These are what just ones that I made, cherry blossom ones. Um, and again, I have all of the threads. I don't look particularly pretty, but I don't really care about that. Um, obviously, longer threads for this one. And um, so I cut. I do. I'm doing the loop method with this one, but um, my heads are one over one. I don't know whether I mentioned that before, um, but I do my heads one over one on twenty five count. So these are shorter lengths on here and um, and then when a floss runs out in here and I don't have a duplicate I will order another one and um, I hope that helps if you've got any questions that I haven't covered um, in here please let me know and um, please leave them in the comments down below and I will reply to your comment and I'll mention um any specific questions that I think more people would want to know the answer to in my next video. Um, but yeah, just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm doing. Um, I, I love it because like, with a stitching shelf, um, I only had to buy the fabric. Um, whereas it's got like 200 odd colours and that would have, it, I wouldn't have been able to start it um, when I did. I didn't start it on World Cross Stitch Day in the end because... Um, my fa fabric didn't come in time. It didn't come until the Monday. Um, but hey, hey. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't have been able to start that. I would have had to wait until I'd have kitted up all of the DMC, which God knows when that would have been. Um, so I like the fact that I've got the threads in front of me. I can start something if I want to. Um, yeah, and I think it's going to be a lot less expensive for me, I'm just replacing ones that um, run out rather than kitting up loads of projects. Um, I will obviously still kit up some with DMC, like I've just discussed, but um, not all of them. So yeah, that's that. Put that back on there. Okay, let's talk about a haul. I only have a little bit. Oh, sorry, reach around. 
Okay, firstly, I ordered a couple more of the word plays by Brenda Gervais. Um, and my friend Megan very kindly ordered them for me. I can only get them from the US um, and sent them over to me. So I can't remember which ones. So I ordered two, but she sent me three. So, um, because she's lovely. And this is a September one. Um, this is the October one. Is it upside down? Yeah. <laughs> That's the October one, and this is the November one. It's getting quite warm in here now. Sun's out again. Um, I am um, going to kit these up. Um, I'm still thinking about what to do in terms of fabric, because Megan and I are doing a stitch along with these, um, and we were supposed to start in August, and I didn't get my bum into gear and get the fabric, because I still sort of think it, I'm sort of still umming and ahhing about what to do. Um, and also, I want to change a lot of the thread colours. I just want to do it in DMC. I want to pick my own colours. And with some of the patterns, I also want to change what's on there. So, for example, um, I'm quite happy, like, with the February one, all the pictures and the words in there. Um, yeah, I think that's that's absolutely fine. Um but for example, March um, has in like a line out like a lamb. Which is it is a reference? It's a religious reference, isn't it? Um, don't really do religion, um, so I'm gonna have to change that, and that kind of means. Well, what I might do is three lambs here instead, because you know March is the sort of springy season, isn't it? Um, what else does that say? Snowy melt, robin arri ro robins arrive. Yeah, um, what else was I looking at the other day that I might want to change? Um, October one looks fine to me. November. Don't know what cornucopia is, so I have to look that up. Sixteen twenty one. It's got pilgrims on there. There's some American references and obviously things like give thanks. So I kind of want to make them UK orientated. So I've got to kind of get my head around that as well, which is why I think I'm hesitating on. I'm just, I'm just hesitating, basically. I think what I'm going to have to do is sit down and decide which one I'm going to do first and go, right, do I like everything that's on here? If I don't, swap out some of the words, swap out some of the images decide on the fabric so that's the first bit of haul just put that there slide this along um i've got a few patterns this month firstly primitive hair were having a 20 percent off sale um because she was selling started selling her patterns off of her website rather than her etsy shop i think that's right um so i'd seen laurie for once upon a stitch and um, stitch this pattern i'd wanted it for a while and this is snow white um, it's a bit of a different style for me, but I really like the colours in here. Um, and Laurie's one was beautiful. So um, I got that. Um, Tilt and Crafts were having a 35% off sale about a week ago. Um, I think it was like the owner's birthday or something like that. So I only had one more on my wish list. So I thought, well, I've got to get it, haven't I? It's a bit raunchy, this one, but... Uh, She's beautiful. She's called Dark Fairy. So yeah, I got her. Um, oh God, I've forgotten what they're called now. Chatelaine, that's it. Chatelaine were having a three day 20% three day off sale, which I've never seen them announce a sale before. Um, and there was a particular reason for it, and I can't remember what it is now. It might have been another birthday thing. So I got my first Chatelaine, and I am denied about what to get. I really like the evening in the park pattern, but I, a lot of people were stitching that, and I sort of thought, oh, you know, am I jumping on a bandwagon? It doesn't really matter, to be honest. But 
Um, then I looked at some of the more sort of oriental patterns um, and I've talked before about how I really like the orient and um, oriental prints and things like that. So I went for the Japanese moss garden in the end, this is what this one looks like. I, I really like the colours on it and the mock-ups are in um, white or, or either on white fabric or black fabric so you can do them on either. So I just like the colours on this. Um, yeah, you can apparently get the um, kit pack from a website called European Cross Stitch. Um, so I might wait to see. Um, they apparently have a sale in October. Um, so I might wait. I'm certainly not going to kit it up yet, but that might have to wait until then. Um, okay, then um, one last pattern that I bought, I think. Oh no, hold on. No, I'm just working my way through your pile. Um, we've been working on the house um, during the holiday, during our six weeks holiday. Um, and one of the things that we've been, we've been thinking about is my daughter's room and the furniture in there and what we want to do in there and things. We've ordered her a new piece of furniture. Um, and my husband said, oh, we should get a couple of prints for the walls. So we've ordered a like a world map that's got lots of animals on it and um, to go up on the wall and then he said I oh, wouldn't uh, like an ABC print be nice and I said well I should really stitch her that um so I had a look around at different patterns and different kits that you could get um and in the end I went for this one now uh, this particular image is showing it as lots of different ornaments but you can stitch it as one and um, this is kids alphabet and it's by an Etsy shop called eccentric avenue and I just like the style of the um, the font um, and the pictures and the colour choices. Um, so I went with that in the end. Um, so you can either do these as individual ornaments or pillows or whatever, or you can do them, stitch them as a whole sampler. Um, so I have ordered just some white 28 count even weave from Wool Warehouse to start stitching that one. And that's gonna be a start in September. Um, I've got a little bit of fabric here. So um, coffee craft fabrics are a hand dyed um, fabric company in the UK. In fact, this lady lives in Essex as well. Um, so um, I sort of followed her on Facebook for a little while and I thought, well, maybe I'll start doing like fabric of the month club or something. Well, I've I've decided I'm not going to do that now. I've done one month and then I'm pulling out of it. And there's, there's nothing against her fabric or whatever. I've just decided actually I'd rather pick my own fabric for projects. And I don't want lots of fabric sitting around that I don't know what to do with. So this is what came this month. You can pick the count and whether you want even weave or linen and the size. So I went for, um, I gave her like a few options of things that I was happy to get. And this is a 28 can even weave um, and it's in this yellow colour and it's a bit, a little bit darker back here. On the back, it's a bit showing a bit darker than, than what you're seeing on the screen. I'm not going to take it out of the plastic. But yeah, I don't really want to know what to do on that. I'm not really a yellow person. So if you've got any ideas of things that like patterns that you know that I've got, um please leave them in the comments down below um otherwise i might end up selling this or using it as a giveaway i don't really know but yeah anyway i did get another piece of her fabric this month that i bought sort of separate to that which i really love um and i bought it for this pattern here um huckleberry farm by the blue flower and this is a piece of um 36 count even weave I think I don't think she does names for her colours. But anyway, it's this purpley fabric, lots of mottling. And and the pictures that I saw on her, her Facebook um just seemed like it would be perfect for it. And I got a 36 count and I can't there's not a three inch border on this. I think there's a two inch border. Um, but um, 
it'll be fine. So yeah, I got that for that. So I just need to get the threads for that now. Um, then with um, Anita from the Violet Stitcher, I'm going to be starting um, one of Anne Stokes's dragons from the World of Cross Stitching magazine. Let me see if I've got a photo of it on my phone or sort of like a partial photo. Mm. Yeah, this one. Well, you can't see his head, but... Um, I saw in her, um, a couple of flosh tubes ago, she had met Anne Stokes at some sort of festival that she'd gone to um, and got her to sign the pattern. And she said she wanted to stitch her signature into the pattern. Um, and I, I said, well, I've got that. Um, I've got that pattern. Um, do you want to stitch it together? So we're going to do a stitch along of it. We're probably going to start in September. Um, I said I just needed to get some fabric for it. Um, and I'm actually going to stitch it for my husband. He loves fantasy and dragons. So um, that's cold now. Um, I decided that I, I want to do it on purple. So I ordered this. This is a um, 32 count Murano even weave. And I think it was in the colour lavender. But I think this is a little bit dark. So um, when I did my order for the fabric for my daughter's ABC sampler, um, I ordered mauve, um, which is a colour that's lighter than this one. So we'll see how that goes. That's coming in the mail um, and I'll sort of see, I'll pull some of the colours out of my master set and see what I think. But yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to be terrible because a lot of those dark, like a lot of those greens are really dark in him. But I'll just see the difference between the two. And then if, if I don't use that, I'll use that for something else. Um, this is um, Winter White Santa by... Nor by Nora Corbett and Mirabilia. Um, Lauren from Cross Stitch Bunny mentioned that um, she bought this from Arts and Designs. Um, it had a few in stock. And when you look at this pattern on eBay, for some reason, it tends to go for like double the price of um, what you can buy it for on Arts and Designs. So I don't know whether this is going out of print, but um, so, you know, if I hear out of print, I, I kind of... I don't know, like, what is it about that? And I just think, oh, I've got to kind of look out for it. But anyway, it was out of stock after I watched her video, probably because she mentioned it, um, but it came back in stock again. Um, I set up, like, an email alert, and so I got it. Um, this comes with the little treasure. Where is it? On here. I think it's for the top of the Christmas tree, although I can't be certain. I don't know. But, yeah, he's really cool. So I got that. Um, and then I was kindly sent by the publisher, um, Jump Into Cross Stitch by Sally Wilson of Caterpillar Cross Stitch. This is her first book that's been published and it is um, a book for beginners. Um, so it only has, I think, six patterns in it. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. And it is basically a book for beginners. So it's quite a small book and it has these six patterns in it. Um, but it shows you exactly, it goes through what you need to do from start to finish. So picking out a fabric, measuring, um, what sort of needle to get, um, you know, whether to use a hoop or a frame or whatever, how, how to start cross stitching. And then it has these really clear patterns in. Um, they're charted in DMC and Anchor. Um, yeah, so I think my favourite one in here is the Summer Songbirds. Really like the colour palette in that one. Um, so I'll probably stitch that. Um, yeah, and then it talks about how to... Um, how to finish things as well, finishing and framing um, at the end there too. 
Um, so I think that's a really nice book for beginners. Um, I think this would be a lovely present for a new stitcher um, or somebody who's, you know, thinking about getting into cross stitch. Um, I think this would be, be a really nice present for them. Um, if you're an experienced stitcher, then, then I don't think this is going to be the book for you. Um, but that's not... Experience issues is not who this is aimed at. This is aimed at beginners. Um, and the fact that it only has six means it's not overwhelming. Um, sometimes you can flick through a cross-stitch book or even a magazine and, think, and be overwhelmed by the amount of choice. Um, and I think that's just sort of like a life thing in general, isn't it? You know, we can, we can be overwhelmed by choice. Um, so, yeah, this one is definitely... Uh, and you, a beginner could think, oh, I could, sti I could stitch all six patterns if I wanted to or just do a few of them. So thank you very much to the publisher for sending this over. Um, I think I do want to stitch those bears and then I might um, give this away um, on my channel afterwards. Um, but it was really nice of them to send that over. Um, two last things that I got. Uh, firstly, I bought Myths and Magic um, cross-stitch book. And I mostly got it because it has this Teresa Wensler um dragon in it is this called it's got a particular name to it um, the princess and the dragon and i've been watching um amy from fiber arts amy um i caught up on all of her videos um over the summer and she stitch, stitches Teresa wensler and really really loves them um and also um lee from creatively she's got um one of her early videos she shows them Teresa wensler um finishes that are lovely and um, apparently the dragon pattern she doesn't have on her website and so they're a bit more difficult to get hold of and I have seen them on eBay um but this book second hand was like three quid um and then the pattern is in here so if that's something that you're interested in I'd maybe go and grab go and grab this but it has other patterns in here as well there's sort of lots of fantasy orientated patterns so let's pick out another one that i like you've got the princess and the unicorn that's not not too bad i don't know about stitching it myself this is a cool one um oriental dragon i really like the colors on that one and the um symbols this is a cool one as well she is called goddess of mercy yeah, I really like that one too. So I got that. And then lastly, um, I sort of have a look at Mooch about on eBay um, and see what sort of dimensions kits I can get for decent price. This isn't a kit. This is the chart on the leftover threads. Um, so this kit is called Elegant Kimono. This is a 2003 dimensions kit. I really like that. Again, the Oriental vibes. Um, and the lady who sent it over sent the leftover threads as well. And the pattern is absolutely fine to read. So um, I got this for a couple of quid. Thought I'd pick that one up. Yeah, so that's that. So let's have a little drink. Um, so... I'm going to do a few floss tuber shout outs. I've already mentioned some um, and I'll leave those in the comments um, down below. Um, so I'm just going to mention a few that I've been watching recently. Um, I started watching um, Emily from Crafty Emily. Um, she stitches. Um, she's stitching a couple of Amy Stewart shelves um, and bookshelves and she stitches a lot of long dogs. Um, and some other full coverage as well as a range of other patterns she's from the UK she lives up in Cumbria I believe um, it's nice finding floss tubes from the UK I like watching them from all over the world but yeah I kind of feel like they're a bit closer to me um, I mentioned Anita from the Violet Stitcher she stitches a lot of different patterns and some really nice full coverage ones too um, I mentioned Lee from Creative Lee she lives in um, Wellington in New Zealand um and um yeah she stitches so quickly um so if you're somebody that likes a lot of to watch people who finish things quickly then she would be a good one to watch 
um, she stitches uh, Mirabilia's, Teresa Wentzler's, Nora Corbett's, um, samplers, she stitches lots of different things. So I'm sort of working my way through her um, videos. Oh, Maggie from Kitchy Whips, if you're not watching her, she is hilarious. If you're having a down day and one of her videos pops up, she will brighten your day. She's just so funny. You know that she's just one of these people that is just naturally funny. Um, yeah, <laughs> she brightens my day. Um, think about who else would be a good one to mention that I haven't mentioned before. Um, Calico from Calico Whimsy, she does uh, vlog style videos, so she'll just vlog throughout the month about what she's stitching. And I normally don't like that style of flossy video, but with her, I don't know, she's just got like a really nice calm vibe about her and she'll like show you when she's out on a walk or in her garden and I really like that. Um... North Island Stitcher, I can't remember her name. She's also from New Zealand. Um, she's done three videos and um, she's got loads of different projects on the go. And yeah, she did a whip raid for um, video number two and that was really enjoyable to watch. I'd really recommend going and looking at her. Um, about some people that I haven't mentioned on here mm, I'm looking for one particular one that oh teeny weeny stitches I did write her name down somewhere Jamie from teeny weeny stitches uh, she's only got a few videos out but she stitches a lot of dimensions kits and so um she did like a kit parade of all the ones that she has got um, and she also gave you some tips for how to pick up rare or out of print dimensions kits for a reasonable price on places like ebay um and that was really interesting to watch i'll definitely go and check out her channel um Who else have I been watching? I'm just scrolling through my... Um, subscriber list. Watching what my daughter's doing as well. God, I don't even know. Who have I not mentioned? No. I feel like I'm missing a couple that would be like really obvious to share with you. Nope. Don't even know. Um anyway, I'll um I'll think of some more to share with you later. But there um I've mentioned lots of channels um that I watched before, but there are a few more that I've been watching more recently that I would definitely recommend. Um Bit of a life update before we go because we've been going for over an hour now. Um, I mentioned that I'd been on holiday. We had a lovely week in Centre Parks in Sherwood Forest. Um, I'd never been to Centre Parks before, um, but we loved it. Um, there, there was there was a decent amount for us to do. Um, you know, Bella is um, twenty months, so she'll be two in November. Um, and there was more to do than I anticipated. So she did a few classes, um, sort of some dancing and singing and there was a swimming session and things. And then we went swimming in general. And then um, they had like a sports bar that had um, soft play in it. Um, so there was a corner that had soft play. So Stephanie and I would get a Diet Pepsi and take turns in looking after her in the soft play and just sit down with the Diet Pepsi, which is nice. Um, there was obviously lots of walking to do. We didn't hire bikes in the end because um, we, ju we just didn't think that we'd use them to their full potential. And plus we had a lodge that was only about a five or 10 minute walk to the village square, whereas some of the lodges were quite a way away. So I think if we'd had a lodge that was a further, much further distance away, a bike would have been 
um, a really, really good idea. Um, but we had a lovely time. We had a couple of day trips. We went to an under 10 theme park called Sundown, um, which I would definitely recommend. Um, I had some lovely rides for um, kids of her age, lots of playgrounds and there was some soft play there as well. Uh, she had a fantastic time. And then we went to um, an animal place called Tropical Butterfly House. Um, and that was relatively small in the grand scheme of things. Like if I compare it to, you know, Colchester Zoo, for example. But again, you know, we only spend two or three hours at a place because, you know, got to then get her some lunch and she has her afternoon nap and things. So therefore you can't spend a whole day somewhere. Um, so that, 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 it was enough for us, you know, she liked looking at the different birds there and they had guinea pigs and we went into the butterfly house. Um, yeah, she had a great time. So we really, really had a lovely time. Um, so yeah, and now we're home and like I mentioned, we're doing a few things to the house, you know, um, putting some stuff up on the walls and deciding what we want to do with different things. It's nice to, the six weeks holiday always for me is a time to kind of take a step back and sort of, you've got the time to make some good decisions and think through some things. And um, when you're at work, it's sort of go, 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 go. Um, so it's been nice to do that. Um, don't know whether there's anything else to share with you really. I think that's about it really <laughs> um no doubt i will remember some things oh the other only other it was my tablet i did buy myself a tablet um to do pattern keeper on and it's in this case that i got from ebay but this is a lenovo tablet um i'll leave a link to it down below um but it's working really well so far and i love using pattern keeper it's a life changer um yeah it's just brilliant really brilliant everything everyone tells you about pattern keeper is true so there we go um so i'm gonna love you and leave you after that hour-long video um i will be back in a couple of weeks time so let's have a look at where are we now so i plan to do a video around saturday the 3rd of september um somewhere around there and back to work on thursday the 1st of september off on the friday as usual um so i will probably film on saturday the 3rd of september um so yeah any questions that you guys have um please leave them down below um i do have a still a couple of extra videos that i want to do um i don't think i'm going to do my craft room tour until later on um after the summer because i've got some prints coming that i want to put up on the wall there's a unit behind me that i've been using um that's been full of wool and i put that wall up in the loft um or just had a sort through it um so i'm not really using it at the moment i'm into my stitching and then i put a lot of my stitching stuff into the unit that i've got behind me and it doesn't really it's not really conducive to what i want um so i ordered a new piece of furniture for behind me so I just want to get myself sorted a little bit in here before I do that video. Um, and then, yeah, I've got another video to do of sort of how to keep your stitching neat. Um, so I think I'll try to film that next week and put that up for you guys. Um, but yeah, any questions, please leave them down below. Um, please leave me any comments that you've got. Um, yeah, and... Um, Happy stitching and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.